did a little intro, a little activity. They did some discussion. They saw a little movie trailer. We front loaded them with some words that they're going to encounter when they read. And so now here's the article. Maybe I passed out the article to all of my students, right? Maybe I'm projecting it also, just like this, and we're going to go line by line. Um, you know, especially if I have different levels of English learners, I probably don't want to just have them do a cold read. I probably don't want to, to just give them the article and read it on your own. They're going to need support. Even our kids who are English only, right? Uh, reading is, is challenging. The literacy skills of our students definitely uh, need a lot of support. Sometimes just for our students, you know, who, who have an issue with focusing, right? A attention deficit or, you know, I think because of technology, a lot of us are now having issues with focusing. And so how do I support that literacy, especially the reading comprehension? So let's take a look at this, right? So notice how we highlighted some of that keywords. I have a, a, a visual here to help out. Um, just wondering, Jenny, do you have any, you know, tools up your sleeve here that you might use, especially, let's say with your non-English speakers? What, what might some, what can we use? Yeah, I've had that instance where I'm supposed to be, you know, having them read and yet they, they don't understand English. They may understand, you know, one or two words here and there, at least now with the front loading, they understand those really important, powerful vocabulary words, but how are they supposed to comprehend when they can't decode? Um, and so for, you know, my very, very beginner students, um, I teach them how to use the Microsoft Translator app if they have a phone. or um, how to, you know, they have their own copy of this, they can copy and paste into like a Google Translate, you know, and just search for it. For it, so at least they can start accessing it in, you know, the language that they're comfortable with. For my kids that are maybe uh, a little bit more advanced, um, I usually like to chunk it because they get um, intimidated by, you know, a, a long passage, you know, and so we want to kind of break it down and slow it down. If it's worth reading, then it's really worth understanding. If it's something that's really going to be helpful, you know, to their, their um later activities, you know, in the unit or whatever. So taking just, you know, one sentence then leaving space and having them either write you know what they think it means or in either in english or in their native language their you know uh, home language mm -hmm. or draw you know some of them are more comfortable showing what they understand you know in a picture form and that's okay too um so i usually like to to have them translate if they, they really do, you know, need to understand kind of the basic, what does it mean? Um, and I also like to chunk it. Very good. And, and I agree. I think especially with the older kids, six to eight to, uh, you know, seniors or uh, 12th graders, many of them have a little gadget, right? And so I always tell them like, you know, it doesn't always have to be used for watching, you know, cat videos. You can use it. Let's show you how. And so, yeah, I downloaded it on my own, uh, the Google, the, the different translation apps that are out there. There's somewhere you could take a picture of the text and it'll translate. It's amazing, right? Um, and have conversations. So, I, you know, again, that's something that you might do in small group or pull, you know, a couple of your students uh, to the side or teach the whole class, right? Hey class, we're gonna visit Italy, right? And they give you a menu, right? And you wanna order food. Show me how you can order, you know, breakfast and make it a, an assignment for all the students. So that way your English learners don't feel like they're being singled out and like, oh, there's something wrong with, with you, right? Like, what did you do wrong? I used to get that feeling all the time. Um, I used to get pulled out of my elementary classes because I needed, you know, ESL instruction and we'd be taken into a little room. And I always felt like I'm getting called in because I did something wrong and I have to hurry up and pass my class so I could get out of this program. And it's a horrible feeling, horrible. And so I, I am hoping that, you know, we really start changing that, that thinking about our second language learners. So, mm -hmm. all right, so we talked a little I'm, bit about- One more thing that I wanted to, to kind of add on to what you're saying is not, not 
drawing attention to the fact that that they you know need some extra support, um, giving them the tools that they can use it themselves. Uh, for my students that uh, are more comfortable in Spanish, or I've got a few that are more comfortable in Chinese, um, using their phone, I can be you know explaining things in English. Um, and holding on to you know, my cell phone using the Microsoft uh, Translator app, it will do live captioning in their language that they prefer. So they can still be getting the same information, um, but in a, a language that they're more comfortable with so that they can start to access the English text. Yeah. Yes, yes. In fact, if you have something like this Google Slides, share it with them. It, you know, nowadays, most students now have a laptop, right? Uh, especially if you're teaching in the core classes, have them have access to your Google Slides so that they can do a quick Google Translate. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we know that for English uh, acquisition, sometimes students need their home language and they slowly start to transition into the English. But they can't just do cold reading um, and expect them to know all the language, right? So we, we want to give them those those uh, supports. Now, we also want- consideration warn though mm -hmm. is that uh, you don't want to just rely on giving them the slides and having them translate it into their home language. For example, I had a student who was more comfortable speaking Spanish, but honestly wasn't able to read it himself. And so, um, because, you know, the, the way that he learned it was through conversation, but he wasn't actually uh, literate, you know, with reading and writing. And so in that case, um, he would always use a set of, you know, uh, earbuds. Yeah. And he would actually have, there was a, a website that I showed him where it could read the Spanish out loud to him, and then he could access. So just be aware that simple translations work for some, but not all. And so you're going to have to try to figure out for every student, you know, what their level is, how much they're going to know. Um, it's just, it's different for everybody. Yeah. And I know this is challenging, you know, we know, and believe me, um, you know, been teaching a while and it's still like, okay, how do, how are we going to do this, right? I have kids over here, and especially trying to manage the class making sure that everyone's doing what they need to do. It, it does, it takes a, you know, a lot of practice, but I think having these different tools, it just shows the students how much you care about them also, and that you're gonna try different things. And I think they appreciate that, especially, you know, again, our English learners who, who might feel like, um, you know, they, they don't wanna ask the questions, they might not ask for help, but if we're giving a, hey, we're gonna try this, we're gonna try that, it, it really sends a really strong message that they are important in our class and they belong in our class. Mm -hmm.